the rest of the agenda.
has them with numerous uh, uh, agenda items that I've been asked. I have, I've, been, I've asked in previous meetings to put numerous items on the agenda, and I have been continuously been um, ignored to putting items on the agenda. Okay. So, with that being said, if we table it, I'm going to ask again, Kevin. Let's table that item, and then we can have this meeting. Correct. Correct. Yeah. What I'll say is, this is because then at least it'll be it'll get tabled okay. to the 26th when Andy is here. Okay. My point is that our role here is not to um, care. Um, this has been an item that's held over time. I'm not going to argue it with you. This has been on, um, and it's, it has been um, had an outsized impact. Yes, you have it. 
Right. Right. That's right. right. That's right. It's an item that I've asked, I've requested numerous times, and now I'm asking, just like how we have Children's Day Book Day, on a televised meeting in June, um, I have to ask for that one to be tabled too. So I don't see what uh, the issue is. I've asked I think for we're going to ask again for another, uh, are you going to ask for another uh, short recess, Dr. Uh, consult with um, the county superintendent? On this, as a governance item, and this is kind of like a scene, so please do just take five. to uh, invite uh, Don Smith, our principal here at Parkside Intermediate School, who was the uh, uh, representative uh, in support for the PK parent graduation. And Don, if you could come forward, please, and let's recognize our wonderful parents who were part of the, this year's PK program. <coughs> Parent 
education program that we began in February. We graduated a total of 25 parents, and uh, they were here every Tuesday night, weekly, uh, for a total of nine weeks. And we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge these parents, so if they call your name, please stand up. Alicia Acevedo. So this evening, we are here to recognize our community difference makers. As uh, the board is aware, each month we showcase either a school, uh, and, and but in June we showcase our community difference makers as well as our uh, district office difference makers. And this evening, uh, we are here to recognize three organizations that have made significant contributions to the school district in the past year. The, uh, and I'll call them up individually, and then we'll do all of our photos. I think I have somebody out there, uh, Nancy's gonna take pictures for us. Um, so the first organization I want to recognize is the San Bruno Lions Club. And so Tom, if you're here, come on up, Tom. So, so I'm going to embarrass the Lions Club just a little bit. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, it's one of the largest service organizations here in San Bruno. For decades, the San Bruno Lions Club has worked behind the scenes to enrich the lives of the San Bruno Park uh, School District students. The annual Posey Parade gives our schools the opportunity to come together around a theme to build floats, participate in a poster contest, and walk together in the parade. Most recently, Lion Dr. Stephen Kelly has worked with the schools on this event. The Lions Club also supports Children's Day, the Teachers Cash for Class, and in December they bring Santa Claus and his elves to our schools for students with special needs and assemble hundreds of holiday food bags for district families in need. 
One of the most significant contributions is that under the leadership of my and Mel Phillips is the free vision screening. Um, Mel, come on up. No. <laughs> um, to every student in the district, including preschool, and I appreciate the Lions uh, partnering with uh, the Healthy Kids Foundation in, in this process. This is new this year. If the vision issue is discovered in one of our students from, the, from one of our low-income families, Dr. Kelly provides an office-free uh, eye consultation and the Lions covers the cost of the glasses. So on behalf of the school district, I wanna thank you for your partnership with us and all of your work that you do to serve the children of our community. service organizations that I belong to here in San Bruno is Rotary Club. I'd like to invite President Greg Pierce and uh, right, Joseph great. Kale to come forward. Be a painting a fence at the district office, supporting Children's Day, teachers class, cash for class, our uh, orientation, our STEM science fair. They honor our, our teachers uh, each year with their uh, with the different uh, uh, Teacher of the Year awards. This year we had a teacher who was recognized as a special education teacher. Uh, one of the most valued support services for San Bruno youth is the Interact Club, which is flourishing at Cappuccino High School. Uh, and growing at Portola Elementary School, and this is organized by our dedicated Rotarian, Josie McHale. Interact is available for students in grade, uh, ages 12 to 18 who want to join together to tackle the issues of their community and, uh, and, and those things that they care most about. Working closely with Ms. McHale and other San Bruno Rotarians, the students are, visibly, are visible helping in numerous city and district activities. Recently, they collaborated with AYSO and Junior Giants to collect uniforms and sports equipment to send to students in Mexico and Central America. Rotarians have helped out in a number of activities this year. Uh, they're always the first that uh, step up and say, what can we do to help the district? What can we do to help the children? Uh, and I have one of the most recent activities, I think this might even be lying, is this uh, turquoise uh, table that that we heard about at a Rotary meeting and that we'll be putting uh, at, a, at a, uh, the district office kind of as a place for community to come and sit together when they're out walking their dog. They can just come to the turquoise table and sit down and have a chat and maybe this will build community. So um, on behalf of the district, I want to say a heartfelt a thank you to our Rotarians for their support to the school district. Kirsten, don't go too far. Where are you? Okay, come up here. So I'm going to give you your certificate. Okay. So, um, Recology. We didn't have Recology in Southern California, so I, when I got up here, I was like, what is Recology? And then I found out about all the work that Recology is doing for the district and for the students. As you know, you know, we are really moving towards uh, becoming more environmentally um, uh, astute in our schools. We're, we're trying to implement programs to help children become aware of uh, trash and recycling and, and be 
being good stewards of the, of the environment. And so the partnership that we have with Recology with Kirsten, uh, the executive director, has been going on for a number of years. She supports the teachers with their class and school projects related to sustainability, including our preschool students, uh, where they presented assemblies uh, to, uh, to teach about uh, recycling. Recology San Bruno works with our students' uh, green teams and recycle 46% of the generated waste district-wide, diverting it from going to landfills by recycling paper, plastic, metals, glass, and composting organic materials through the Recology San Bruno's Organics Program, which is then turned into rich soil uh, amendment used by farmers and landscapers. So I don't know where to go pick that up, but I, I might need a little bit for my garden. This partnership has resulted in the San Bruno Park School District and our individual schools receiving honors in the area of sustainability and protecting the environment, including from sustainable San Mateo County, uh, the only school district in, this, in the county that received this recognition in 2017. So on behalf of the board, Kirsten, thank you so much for all you do. You also step up and provide um, lots of benefits to our teachers at our back to school, at our uh, teacher appreciation event, the donations are, are, are uh, heartfelt, and our teachers love them. And we look forward to a continued partnership with Republic. Thank, Thank you. I would like to start the meeting this evening with some expressions of gratitude. Since my appointment as superintendent of the district, I have had the fortune to work, to meet and work with a number of wonderful folks, teachers, staff, administrators, board, and most of all, the community members, including parents, business owners, and many local leaders. Some elected, some not. <laughs> as some have attested to my leadership as a key to the beginnings of the transformation work here in San Bruno, the credit actually goes to many people. Tonight, we recognize some of the folks who've stepped up and provided support. There are many more. There are folks who've made introductions to allow me to share the vision for Schools with Tomorrow Inside, who walked many weekends in support of Measure X, who served on committees to help come through the tough decisions and recommendations to support the fiscal recovery plan, DTAs who gave them of themselves to support schools, businesses and foundations who graciously endorsed and contributed to the district's programs and activities. Folks who spent hours on working on campaign strategy, writing grants, developing awards, all to bring the wonderful work and efforts of the teachers and students in our district, and elected officials outside the board who helped to navigate some of the challenges along the way. The teachers, the students, I've so appreciated my time here. The list goes on. Tonight I want to thank all the folks who've been a part of my journey here in the district. Our students will benefit from your commitment to the district. It has been my honor to serve, as a, serve the San Bruno community over these past two years. This is a special district, one with much potential. The key will be to ensure a new transition for the next leader to take the district to the next place. That's my report. Um, 
to see that and and personal integrity too and your real hard work too but also to understand that um, the transformational work the work of transforming a district becoming a vision to that is not those are there's not an empty word in there you, you're standing for an actual process and put us on a a path forward that I think is um, that the community has embraced and, and I just uh, value that so much. What I also perhaps ask too is that, that not to embarrass you again, but at our next meeting too, if we could have just a little bit plan to have a bit of celebration for your service here too. Because though it was um, shorter than we would like, you know, or, or the shorter than we may have benefited from, because I know we would benefit from every day, I think it's something to celebrate. So thank you. Thank you. Chair, uh, thank you. I would like to uh, really applaud the professionalism that Dr. Priscilla Kemp has provided the leadership in our difficult fiscal and infrastructural needs. She has been a difficult asset to the district and what she has done for the community, for the teachers, staff, but most importantly, working through the students who's benefit from her leadership, her tenacity, her perseverance, and her dedication to her level of education at all levels. It's been a privilege and honor to work with you, Dr. Stella Kemp. And Stella, I've enjoyed our meetings like we have with all the other board members where we discuss the future of education of San Bruno children. Thank you from the bottom of my heart.
The composition of the History Social Studies Pilot Committee included representation from each grade level and from all school sites. In the next few weeks, we'll be working with teacher leaders to plan for our new teacher orientation in August and to complete some projects for supporting professional learning and instruction in the next year. This year has progressed at a rapid pace, and I'm looking forward to another successful year here this summer. Martinez, trustees, and superintendent. Huh? In special education services, we have been preparing for our extended school year program, which will start next Tuesday at Rolling Wood. We're fully staffed with teachers and service providers for our extended school year, and I'm excited to be serving as the ESY principal. We've also been finalizing staffing for the 2019-2020 school year with both in-house and agency contractors. The contracts for agency staff will be ready to present at the next board meeting, and if they are approved, we are thrilled to report that we will be fully staffed for all teachers and service provider positions in special education for next year. We have also been working on finalizing our performance indicator review plan, and we'll submit that to the SELPA at the end of the month. The Parents Helping Parents event happened on June 1st, and the staff from PHP, as well as Gate Paths Family Resource Center who attended, shared some really wonderful feedback about the value of our partnership with their agencies and the support that we're providing as a district to our families. In the Student Services Department, we've been working closely with Ed Services, Business Services, and our Data Tech to align our district forms with Illuminate Entry Fields. And we'll continue our planning for a professional development series next year that will include office managers and parent liaisons. We're also beginning the process of updating our parent handbook and first aid packets with new legislative requirements for annual notices that will be in effect for the next school year. In addition, we're looking into developing a training series for administrators on a variety of topics such as attendance, discipline, and Section 504 requirements. While we know that the summer will be over before we know it, we're looking forward to being incredibly productive and continuing our pathway of forward momentum next school year.
MIT has just as far with a metal list. All sides of painting and stripping, striping of all parking lots, all sides of painting, curbs and fire lane curbs. Bel Air clean, repair, replace the gutters, or no one replace the gutters. Bel Air install electrical items for in the multi-purpose room for a new overhead projector. Rolling wood replace the fence barrier from sidewalk to parking as it is a safety hazard. All sites replace the broken blinds, all sites power wash all buildings. JM paint portable after repairs. <coughs> Outsourcing JM placement of siding and portables. Outsourcing JM portable for fifth grade class, so it's a new one. Hopefully it'll happen. Rolling wood install new windows, window locks and wide classroom. Parkside convert room to new special education program room. Um, Allen and Parkside find place to store some of the chairs. And Bel Air Big Lift install iPad cabinets and rooms by 125. John Muir again replace the carpet and the particles. JN paint the bathrooms. Portable strip floors and refinished tile. So that's a very long list for both of those apartments. Payroll is ensuring all payroll time sheets for employees have been processed. Reviewing time sheets for accuracy to ensure accuracy, getting ready to roll into the new year. Business services, rolling of HR to the new year, invoicing all reimbursable items, such as the ones for the PTAs. Getting ready to close our books, this takes about two months. Answering any questions from county regarding the LCAP and the budget, and general spring and summer cleanup. Many people take vacations, so the skeleton crew is, uh, the crew is very skeleton during the summer. And another item that I want to continue with is sinking. You have to make a read it.
by improvement or even with a failure, and I will not be lost. Doesn't have done the change in favor. And if the community doesn't hold each member of the board accountable to do so, I have some wonderful people during, I have met some wonderful people during my time here who I will truly miss. My thanks to them and those in the district who have recognized the accomplishments this administration has made in the best interest of the children of Severn.
require many hours behind numbers. I, I work with numbers as you do, but not, not to your extent. So when I see a few numbers on a page, I know that you have massive spreadsheets behind that. And so you make it look all nice with a nice summary, and you make it sound easy to put together, but I know that it takes dedication and it takes countless hours. And I know that you're at the district office um, late at night, and, and as Dr. Sanchez mentioned on the weekend, thank you for, I want to thank you for um, all that you've done for our district. And it's true what everyone has said. Uh, our current board culture and behavior is, is just unacceptable. And I, and I really am sorry for the way that you have felt and the way that you have, have been mistreated. Wherever you end up, I mean, you have a lot of choices, I'm sure. Wherever you land, um, they're very fortunate to have you, to be receiving you. And I, I, I know that most people probably don't know that you actually live far from our school district, and you spend hours just commuting here. And that's true that but sometimes you're here late, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and then you have a long, long commute home. And everybody knows that, but that, that is true dedication. And even tonight, when um, I appreciate when you first started to, to talk about your, your uh, staff report, you weren't upset. You were you were upset because you care about our district, and you were upset that we were not able to vote on necessary things tonight. And that, that's a true heart and soul for the district. So I want to recognize that. Thank you for that.
to express my extreme frustration and disappointment over Dr. Kemp's resignation. As you know, I have been actively involved in the San Bruno Park School District for the past 12 years. First at the school PTA level, and then with the San Bruno Education Foundation. My fellow SBEF board members, whom I do not speak for, and I put countless hours of our personal and professional time and effort into improving the San Bruno Park School District in the hope that someday our schools will be a reason people want to live in San Bruno rather than a reason for avoiding it. You as a board of trustees stymie our efforts with your infighting and your inability to work with and judge, and, excuse me, work with and support our superintendent. While it is your duty to oversee the administration, it is not your duty to replace the sound judgment of the district's leader with your own ill-informed and often irrational ideas. While I address this communication to all of you, I am mostly speaking to Ms. Blanco. Jennifer, I have known you for several years and have always had a good working relationship with you. But just as you seem to relish in calling people out at board meetings, I must call you out here. While your intentions may be good, your actions are harmful, especially to the most vulnerable of our city who will inevitably suffer the most in an unhealthy school district. Often you seem to make trouble just for the sake of making trouble. If it is drama you seek, you should join a repertory company. The school board has serious work to do. There is no time for the pettiness I have witnessed at board meetings which is the reason I no longer attend them. It impedes progress. If you're not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. This should have been a year to celebrate. Our community passed Measure X, allowing the district to make big and willful needed changes. Instead, we have lost a strong and competent leader late in the school year at the worst possible time. This is on you, trustees. Please read this letter into the record on June 12th board meeting. Steaming mad Renee Kellenheim. The um, first part I have in public comment is from Jim Wayne. Good evening. Good evening. Before I begin, I just want to say to Wendy. I didn't get to know you for a very long period of time because uh, on the oversight board we just uh, are in our infancy, but uh, I really hate to see you go. My best. Jim Wayne, Palmer Courts in Bruno, President Martinez, and members of the board. I have lived in and been an active member of the San Bruno community for over 40 years. In less than two years, I have watched two new superintendents bring light, vision, and leadership to the school district, then leave. The dots have to connect somewhere when there is an exodus like this and the recent Daily Journal story about board dysfunction in the San Bernardino Park School District called our attention to the why. Dr. Kemp, you came to San Bruno, you rolled up your sleeves and dug deep into the fabrics of our community to tap into the heart of San Bruno, which is that we have heart and we support our children. When a national search for superintendent by another school district results in our San Bruno superintendent identified as the best of the best, as a community, we have to ask, why then did some on this board not recognize it? Public record reveals that Dr. Kemp was the only employee of the district not to receive an increase in compensation since joining the district. Your heart and vision for educational transformation was behind the first school bond measure in 20 years passing last November, and I was pleased to be an endorser of that measure. You joined the San Bruno Rotary, and we're about to become the next president of the club. Last week, you were honored by the San Bruno Community Foundation for your partnership with them on transforming education for San Bruno children. You were committed to San Bruno, and the community at large embraced you. But members of this board did not act, as was clearly revealed in the Daily Journal story. So I say to the board now, please don't make this mistake again. Find some way to come together around the only reason you were elected to be here, for our children. Losing the superintendent of the caliber of Dr. Kemp is not aligned with doing what is in the best interest of San Bruno or its children. 
I was appointed by this board to the Bond Oversight Committee, and although in its infancy, I can tell you that the committee is excited for the future potential of this district going forward. As quoted in the Daily Journal story, for it to be suggested that some or all of the district plans now in place should be put on hold is, to say the least, ludicrous and an insult to the people and children of San Bruno who so aggressively supported the bond measure and Dr. Kent's vision. Thank you for your time. going to read this just as Raul wrote it. Dear trustees, my name is Raul Gomez. I am a lifetime resident of San Bruno. My two children attended El Cristo and Parkside, and I myself was also a student in El Cristo, Parkside, and Cappuccino years ago. During my children's terms at these schools, I volunteered for many different roles supporting the San Bruno Park School District over a span of 15 years. For much of this time, I have been highly concerned about the unprofessional interactions between board members that played out in public settings as well as inappropriate actions I have personally witnessed. This dysfunctional behavior, along with the failure of the board to work as a team has caused us to lose our second superintendent. This is unacceptable. Trustee Jennifer Blanco. On May 30th, you were quoted in the Daily Journal stating, I think what we need to do is hold off on any of these plans right now until we actually hire the next superintendent. As you were well aware, the board adopted a vision the community showed their support by passing the bond. So this now, the district's vision, this now is the district's vision. As a trustee, your remark reveals a disturbing lack of progressive thinking and is a betrayal of the community that you have been entrusted to serve. Superintendent Dr. Stella Kemp, thank you for your leadership and all the hard work that you have dedicated to the San Bruno Park School District. While serving on the 7-Eleven Committee, I quickly learned what an asset you are to the district. The following are just a few highlights of the many improvements under your direction. A new vision for the district, schools with tomorrow inside. Collaboration between corporate leaders with community and educational leaders to create a portrait of the graduate to guide the district's mission and vision. Steady fiscal recovery through school consolidation, resulting in the district maintaining positive certification. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to support teachers and students, including SEAL, Bel Air, Allen, and for parents in school innovation work at Parkside. Improved student attendance, mostly with ELL and students with special needs. We are forever grateful for all the above, as well as all the other enhancements you brought to the district. Trustees, during Dr. Hutt's tenure as superintendent, it was appropriate to carefully monitor his actions because of his demonstrated lack of trust to the community. However, this is no longer the case, and we must have faith in our new superintendent in order to move forward in a positive direction. As we begin to seek our new superintendent, I implore you to cast your personal feelings aside and function like a united board. <coughs> Remember the reason you were elected in the first place. You pledged to serve the children of San Bruno first and foremost, 
and now is the time to honor that pledge. Sincerely, Raul Magomez. Yeah. <laughs> in August 2017, a positive ripple effect occurred in the community. Hold on a second, there's a bug. <laughs> with the appointment of Dr. Kemp as superintendent. It began with a vision for transformation of education and facilities that immediately caught on out in the community. So when June 2018 rolled around, people were poised to help support a bond campaign. When that campaign that I worked on began last summer, for the first time in 20 years, people of all ages from all sectors of the community came to volunteer and vote in such large numbers that the bond measure to rebuild our schools passed with 70% of the vote. Currently, Dr. Kemp was forging partnerships with service clubs, donors, and corporate sectors that resulted in major grant funding for programs and buy-in for the portrait of a graduate work, which he just presented to the board last month. The year that should have been celebrated like no other in our history, and I've lived here over 58 years, has now culminated in Dr. Kemp's resignation. With two good superintendents leaving the district in less than two years, our district has lost the caliber of leadership that two other school districts couldn't wait to have for themselves. Several on this board have accountability in these resignations, and if you don't get your act together soon, there will be a negative ripple effect. This is what I predict. San Bruno's Park School District will become stagnant again. People will choose to send their children elsewhere. More schools will have to close, which leads to staff losing jobs. Enrollment at Cappuccino, where I volunteer a good deal of my time, will also decline and jobs will be lost there. What happens? When that happens, businesses won't be interested in coming to San Bruno. And the question becomes, what happens to the city of San Bruno itself? I live in a court where two of the homes have new families. Because of the school district's reputation, both choice chose to send their children to other than San Bruno Park schools. These children will never have strong ties to our community or be a part of its future. A good community is defined by many things. Strong educational leadership is one of them, and it is lacking in three members of this board. How did you let this leader and Wendy get away? that you were subjected to abuse and bullying, which all of us here have witnessed. We suspend our students for these actions. It's time that we hold our elected officials accountable as well. We have lost um, President Martinez, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Kemp. We have lost two superintendents in less than two years. Did they deserve these opportunities? Yes. Did they want to leave San Bruno? I don't think so. So then, why? 
There are members of San Bruno Park School Board who have not recognized the superintendent as a key member of their governance team. As a result, we all lose. The district, the community, and most importantly, the students. Consensus building has not occurred on this board. In its place, there has been a perverse mindset among some to not let the superintendent win. For nearly four years, I have had the privilege of working closely with the two superintendents to share our with our community all the good news happening in our schools, and there is so much of it. So I've had a close vantage point from which to observe accomplishments these two leaders are responsible for. Less than two years ago, Dr. Kemp joined the governance team to build on the recovery work begun by former Superintendent Olson. Dr. Kemp's commitment on behalf of our community was to make the hard decisions that are necessary to transform school culture in order to ensure that all students have access to high quality educational programs and can become positive contributors to society. A visionary thinker, Dr. Kemp enthusiastically told me that she saw our district position as a quote, gateway to the world. Flanked on one side, she said, by a generation of creative thinkers and doers at YouTube, and on the other by a gorgeous state-of-the-art Cappuccino High School. She noted that we look east to an international airport and major transportation stations, and west to a newly modernized Skyline College and an ocean that connects continents. <clears throat> that vision of what a beacon our district could be was manifest in Schools with Tomorrow Inside. To create educational and facilities transformation that would indeed open doors for San Bruno children to the world. Supported by most of the board, this vision captured the imagination of the San Bruno community such that after 20 years of failed attempts to pass tax measures in the district, last November, 70% of the community did support Measure X. Soon after, followed Moody's elevation of the district's bond rating, attributing the new rating to a quote, strong leadership team and management's ability to rapidly turn around its financial position. Thank you, Wendy, end quote which included the difficult decision of school consolidation. This vision inspired new branding and website for the district, attracted new leadership in educational services, special education and student services, areas that were either sorely lacking or where there had been long-standing vacancies crippling progress. The vision garnered honors and awards for the district and attracted hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to support teachers and students. A firm believer that schools and community are one unit and that partnerships with all sectors of the community are essential to support children reaching their maximum potential, Dr. Kemp ignited support from the corporate and business sectors to join in helping design a portrait of the San Bruno Park graduate to guide the district with strategic planning to fulfill its mission and vision. In support of early literacy in the district, Dr. Kemp brought together a new community collaborative for the Big Lift to create a network of integrated systems around early childhood edu education that are aligned with high quality standards and sustain the work already accomplished with Big Lift grant funding. The list goes on and on, and what captured the imagination of our community did not go unnoticed in another school district's recent nationwide search for a superintendent. As former Mayor Ruin just shared with you, they see Dr. Kemp as the best of the best. We are now losing that catalyst for changing the educational experience that San Bruno children have in this school district, but we have not lost the foundation she leaves behind. It is within each of us to keep progress in forward motion. We have the power to win for our children's sake if we commit to being team players. 
members of the board, in closing, another of Dr. Camp's milestones was introducing an expectation of board retreats to improve and create effective board governance between the trustees and superintendent as a T-E-A-M. Together, everyone achieves more. Please turn the page and adopt this as your new mantra so that our San Bruno team wins. We are losing too much and too often. Thank you. David Nigel, 520 Skyline Boulevard. You've heard that three times now. Um, I've been living in San Bruno since 1959. I got my educational start at Allen School. I taught six wonderful years there, and then two wonderful years at Engwall. I was so good they closed the school. <laughs> um, but Dr. Kemp, you are a sparkling gem. We're going to miss you so, so much. You're innovative, you're smart, and you're committed. You've worked so hard. I am so upset that you're leaving. And um, I want to wish you well. You're going to a very good district. I've taught for 47 years, and um, I know good administrators. You are a great administrator. We're going to miss you a lot. Um, Idea was proud. My our children went through John Muir and Parkside, and I spent many wonderful uh, days in this particular gym before the gym was built. And we had faculty games between Parkside and Engel. We had such a community and such an outreach, and we were so proud. And um, I'm sad to say that when I, in my district. When I read this, that everybody on the peninsula reads that the board dysfunction fuels superintendent's uh, departure, it breaks my heart. I'm so upset. And um, you have, you know, I've worked, uh, I'm probably the longest serving park commissioner in the United States. I'm in my 50th year, I was appointed in 1970. And working with you, also on the bicycle and pedestrian, Children's Day in the Park. You have always been so supportive and your outreach and collegiality with us has been so strong. And uh, I want to thank you for that. I was proud of the fact that I, this lady over here, Wendy, worked so hard on Proposition and Measure X and um, we owe her a lot of credit. I, I worked a little bit, but she worked 80 hours a week. It was unbelievable. Um, my son is a director with the Sacramento Office of Education, and uh, he lives in El Dorado County. And I went to visit Cheryl Olson, our previous superintendent. She is so revered up there and so liked. How we lost two wonderful people is unbelievable. And one last thing, I'm not a negative person. But when trustee Blanco left the meeting, it was disgraceful and an insult to us that came to address the board. And I'm very upset with that. I want to wish you well. You have some big tasks in front of you, losing two wonderful people. And I wish you well. Thank you. meetings is because of the dysfunction. So for many of you, you know, um, my son has been in this district since kindergarten, and he had just finished fourth grade. And I remember speaking about this before, but I am passionate about public education, but not in San Bruno. 
not anymore. And I am angry. I am very angry. First, I want to thank Dr. Stella Kim. Um, I've gotten to know her quite well in the last two years because um, I've done everything that I could to try to improve San Bruno schools. Um, I volunteered so many hours that it's become an issue in our, my marriage. Um, then my husband repeatedly say, said, why are you spending so much time for everybody else and not for our son? And I kept saying, well, because I'm, I'm, I'm helping, I'm working to help make everything better for our son and for all the children in San Bruno. And I, I believe, and I still believe in Dr. Kent's leadership, which has been incredible. I've seen her tackle so much. I've seen her spend so many hours, extra hours. Um, for Measure X, uh, for one, uh, I am the co-chair of the Committee to Improve San Bruno Schools, among many other things. I stepped up, uh, and I was the lead for the voter outreach, which meant nine Saturdays in uh, September and October before the election. Uh, the precinct walked based out of my house. I had never done anything like this before. I ran the phone banking initially twice a week, and thanks to um, my friend Kathy Cannon, who watched, her and her husband watched my son, because my husband has a restaurant, he works 60 plus hours a week. He, you know, um, anyway, I was able to leave the phone banking, and it ended up being many more days a week. But Stella and Wendy, Wendy Mitchell, um, were there so much, um, volunteering nights, on the weekends, um, they were out there. And um, I remember Stella would always ask for Bel Air. She always wanted to walk Bel Air because she really wanted to understand what was going on in Bel Air and get to know the community. And I remember this in the last five years that some board members and some people, you know, had been really concerned about Bel Air, which, you know, I, I totally understood. And Stella has done so much for Bel Air, so much, um, it seems. And uh, special ed, that's another thing I heard over the years was a big problem. And uh, Stella has brought leadership there for, for special ed. Our financial situation, bringing, you know, Wendy and I mean, I just, I remember that we were facing, that we were in negative declaration. I remember what we were facing. We were facing getting taken over by the state. That's what this district was facing. So we did have, you did have a lot of hard decisions and they, it takes strong leadership to make those decisions. And, and there was so much done. My, my son went to El Crystal kindergarten, through third grade until it closed. And he was extremely angry because I was the chair of the Surplus Facilities Committee and voted to close down El Crystal, which the board you know, ended up supporting. He was very angry at me. He was so angry, he said, Mommy, don't talk to me about this again. Just don't talk to me about it. But you know, he started John Muir, and I, first day I picked him up, first day of school, how was things? Things were good. And his best friend said, things were good, but I still miss El Crystal. I said, that's okay. A week later, my son, on his own, said, Mommy, I should never have gone to El Crystal. The difference in the education he noticed in a week, you know, that education that he was getting at John Lee. So the thing is, what I am angry about is that this district didn't close El Crystal before my son started in 2014, because this stuff should have been done a long time ago. You should have dealt with the surplus facilities issue a long time ago. You should have passed the bond measure a long time ago. And you should have passed the parcel tax a long time ago. You should have done all of these things, you know? And, you know, we're getting there. We're trying to get there. But I am, I am so angry. I am so angry with dysfunctional board members, board members that bully, board members that make it 
so I feel unsafe to come here, you know? Um, and um, board members that, in their silence, are supporting that bullying. I am just so angry. Um, sorry. I, I'm not sure what we're going to do. I asked the county superintendent, Nancy McGee, please, 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 please help our district get it together. I already emailed you, and you know, but I am saying this out loud. This district um, needs a lot of help again. Um, we're going to need a new CBO now, and I don't blame Wendy at all. I'm just so thankful for all she's done. And we need a new superintendent. I guess what I want to close on is I want to ask for a number of resignations. I am sick and tired of this dysfunction, and I would like the resignation of Jennifer Blanco, number one. I would even like the consideration of other board members to resign. If you cannot be a part of governing, then get out. I'm tired of it. Susie Santiago. Good evening. Um, my name is Susie Santiago, and my husband and I run Transcar. We have provided transportation to some of the students in the district for the past 13 years. We are also longtime residents of San Bruno. I've gone through the San Bruno schools and so have my kids. September 2018, we signed contracts with the district for transportation for the 2018 school year. On April 15, 2019, we received a text message simply saying, as of April 19th, services with transfer will cease. That was a four-day notice. Not reasonable, was it? There was no explanation and no response to our questions, why, what happened, please call me. It wasn't until Bo emailed Stella for answers, who then sent him to Wendy, who in short answered with, this was due to cost cutting. So they terminate contracts via text message. Not only was this a breach of contract, John Daly had been telling parents and other transportation companies that we were not reliable, our drivers were inconsistent, and we were and they were not happy with our service. For our Transstar drivers, I want to say they are very reliable, kind and caring, and always put safety of the students first. They wanted, they waited for parents that were running late. They picked up students when they needed to go home sick. They were absolutely reliable and consistent. It is actually Mr. Daly who would forget to relay important information and details for pickups. Wrong contact phone numbers, pickup locations, and special instructions and then blame the driver. Over the past year, Mr. Daly continued asking for our help covering transportation needs when district van and bus drivers were on vacation and sick leave. He called us for new and temporary students needing transportation, and there was never a mention that the district was unhappy with our service. My goal for speaking tonight is first, for Transstar and the Transstar drivers. We've been a small local business for 30 years. It hurts when someone speaks ill of your hard work and of your employees. Secondly, to bring awareness to the small business matter like ours. We were basically fooled into thinking John Daly was an employee when he was signing our contracts back in September of 2018. But according to your board minutes, he was not an employee until April 1st, 2019. 
I just believe that the way that this was handled was definitely wrong. And I don't think our company deserved to be terminated via text message. And I think the district needs to improve on their services there. Thank you. Board of Trustees and um, Superintendent Dr. Chen. Um, my name is Mary Lou Johnson. I'm a resident of San Bernardino for 43 years and I found a business in San Bernardino for 45 years. She has been here for 68 years. It's a preschool and school age programs. And the reason I want to uh, mention that is because I have seen thousands, actually 40,000 plus children go through my schools, the majority of them in San Bernardino students. I'd like to address this evening um, my immediate concerns of the future of the education of the children. I think we've seen this evening once again the heartache of the talented people who are being in our district. This is exactly my concern. The turnover in the district has been no more than enough. It's really appalling. The reason behind it is appalling. Two talented superintendents in four years, Kim Harper, Director of Instruction, Cynthia Shea, CBO, top important people who make these decisions that lead our community strong, and they're gone, they're absolutely gone. Now we're losing the best of the best. You know, it's interesting because I thought she said pretty saying these words up here about Dr. Kim, the best of the best, and all these but you are, you're the best of the best. And we've had some good superintendents over my time, and, but you have been the best of the best. And um, a national research is huge. A national research in you were chosen, Dr. Kemp. Congratulations for that. Congratulations, and I am happy that you are moving in that direction, but my heart is broken that you are. We're losing the leader of the portrait of a graduate. We're losing the leader that passed, that was part of passing measure us. Uh, like 20 years we didn't have any of that happen. We were part of that along with Wendy. Walmart is flying to a top manager from Arkansas to come here to do amazing work. We did the first Kiwanis Club in San Bernardino. We were president elect of the San Bruno Rotary. Huge loss to our Rotary Club. I've gotten to know you through Rotary Club, to, to know Cheryl through Rotary. You're solid, you're committed, you're talented. You are a visionary leader, warm and caring person. And I, I've been honored to serve on several committees that you have asked me to be on. And to think that we're losing that opportunity of that passion that I saw at work as a leader. The last meeting when I was here, and I could I almost like we had to continue down. You were almost on, you know, off your feet talking about that. Your love for the children is so deep and so true. It appalls me to think that any board member would leave and not hear that. What does that say? about the children. And that's really what I'm here about, is, is the children. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about government, government so I'll try to make my comments brief. I've crossed off lots of things. But I want to say that re research has shown, has found that in working with hundreds of high-performing effective schools, board, board trustees and superintendents, and in every case, they govern with a profound commitment to quality education for all combined with a deep understanding of what governance is all about. We do not have governance on our board. And that's really important. President Martinez, you have a huge task before you. And it is not easy being at the home to do this, but I expect that of you, and I know that you will do it. It's not an easy <coughs> Governance consists of setting direction and ongoing oversight of the district. Serve the needs of the whole community, 
not just those that want it, that are um, desires or an agenda. It's about meeting the needs of the community, all the community. I feel strongly that public manners are important. Trustees with a governance mindset always mind the manners. I don't see minding manners. Children would expect me to mind the manners. As others have indicated, children would have been expelled, suspended, reprimanded, whatever it took for them to not act in a particular way. And it, could, it continues to happen in this district. The most successful superintendents with high performing districts are purposeful in their engagement with the board. They support a governance culture based on collaboration and trust. And that's missing from our board is trust. Leading to a high level of coherence. I don't know how we're going to plan to do that, but I do know that we will as a complete board. And um, I think that you have a huge decision as to what what to do, and I can't imagine any other way except to do the right thing. It is not reasonable to expect that trustees have a strong, well-defined governance. Um, it is not uh, it is not unreasonable, excuse me, to expect that trustees have a strong, well-defined uh, governance mindset, and that is what we need. I ask you how will we do that? And it is not so dissimilar in concept to what we expect teachers to have in a classroom, strong, well-defined instructional teaching mindsets, or what we expect managers to have a strong, well-defined administrative mindset. It is not unreasonable to expect the trustees to have a strong, well-defined governance mindset. And in closing, First, I want to thank Wendy. Uh, Wendy, thank you for what you've done here in the district. I met you first at the Millbury, Millbury School District when I had a school age program there. And at first, I thought you were, oh my gosh, she's a tough cookie. How am I going to figure this out? But you know what the tough cookie was? You were completely committed to doing what was right for the district. And I learned that in the process of that. I mean, I always liked the components, but I really respected the fact that you only stood what was right for the district. And I respect you for that, and I really am happy that you were here at this district. And Dr. Kemp, I thank you for what you have given um, to our community, for your great goodness. Selfishly, I will miss you because I was looking forward to working side by side with you, um, learning from you, and gaining as much information, and I'm many times behind the scenes, but how can I best support you? And I want you to know that I continue to pull that out. Uh, thank you for hearing me out. And I look forward to a good plan of action from the Board of Trustees. Good evening, Board. President Martinez, trustees, and Dr. Kemp. My name is Kathy Cannon. I'm a parent and a community member in here. My first board meeting for this school district was five years ago and three superintendents ago. It was loud. It was um, combative. There was arguing from those at the table and from the audience to the board and from the board back to the audience. There was ridiculous amounts of confusion. I remember a former staff member of the district standing up and arguing a point. And although the board in your role is not allowed to respond to public comments at the time, I was shocked that no moments during discussion in deliberation were taken to educate one another on why decisions were being made, not just what decision you were, they were each making at the time. Five years ago, I thought that that was just maybe part of the process in this particular district, and that's the way it was at the time, and five years later, I'm realizing that's not the case. Although some of the volume has decreased, the veracity of the arguments has not. 
I was told by a former board member, well, you should have seen it 20 years ago. I don't care what it looked like 20 years ago. I care what it looked like tonight. I care what it looked like this year, last year, and the year before, and I also care what it's gonna look like on Monday and at all of the following meetings. You see, my children, and I have five children in the school district, have been harmed this year in their educational and mental health process by a lack of policy at a site administrative level and often by a lack of awareness and a lack of cooperation by teachers in our district. And I think that this, the reason for all of this can come down to the simple fact that their time and their training is at issue. Perhaps if everyone at higher levels was doing their jobs, these administrators and teachers would have had the breathing room to actually do theirs. The problem is this has to come from the top. And as a board of trustees, when you begin getting into the levels of those below you, you then force their hand to get into the daily levels of those below them, who must then in turn get into the daily levels of those below them. And then those teachers cannot get into the daily levels of those they teach in their classroom, and those are my kids. A board serves at a 35,000 foot level, not in the minutia. This is what you were elected to do. Yes, it is really wonderful on Facebook or social media or in a newspaper to say you're elected to serve the children, but children cannot understand budget percentages for the district level. Children do not understand Robert's Rules of Orders and how to have a meeting with decorum and discussion and even disagreement. We have incredible teachers and administrators in this district who are trying to fight in the trenches for our children. But we need you as a board to raise above the noise, not make no more noise. I have become a friend and a team member with many of the teachers in this district on behalf of my own kids and other students. But at times I have heard other teachers assassinate the character of their site level administrators. I have worked and partnered with site level administrators, but at times I have seen them roll their eyes about what goes on above or below them. Board, we have all heard and it's been well documented, when you argue, you yell, you huff, you tell each other to shut up, you storm out, we all see it. But let me tell you this, my meetings with district level leadership, in particular Dr. Stella Kemp and Sarah Notch, have been the only conversations at a district level where a buck was never passed, blame was never shifted, and no one was thrown under the bus in those meetings. The words I heard were we, Together, work. Board, please get back in your place as trustees. Don't attempt reorganization as a board until you have all done your homework to take the board governance training. Tenure is not a factor in this, whether it has been a short tenure so far on the board or whether you've been here for 12 years. You cannot try to lead these meetings, do it effectively, be able to follow the Brown Act, Robert's Rules of Orders, and these things you need to learn for proper governance if you have not gone through the proper training. Tonight we had a matriarch of education at the preschool level basically school us. Because I remember previous meetings where she did not agree with decisions, where she was having to personally deal with the, the consequences of what was going on in our district, how it was affecting not just her as a businesswoman, but her as an educator, her as a community member. And tonight I heard her honor and speak well of and I have seen her continue to work with people that she disagreed with and that affected her life in major ways. Please, let's all go back to happy homes. Let's all go back to preschool and learn some of these lessons about how we work together, how we stay at the table and have conversations, how we disagree, and how it's okay. I have had heated conversations with teachers. I have had heated conversations with administrators, but I will go back into their classroom and serve the following week. I will go back into their office and volunteer at the next event because we are on the same team. And it's okay if we disagree sometimes. It's okay if we disagree a lot of the time because we are supposed to be, be working together. There are some of us who do that at one level. As a board, you're not supposed to be in the trenches. You are supposed to be getting a bird's eye view and seeing things from a much higher level and being able to help the administration communicate to that community with clarity and with unity. Please, do your jobs well.
Good evening, um, President Martinez and board. Um, my name is Barbara Arena. I am a teacher here at Parkside, new this year, um, hired by my principal right over here at Godsmith and Stella. And um, I'm just here uh, because I, I don't live here, I live in Pacifica, um, but I feel it so often. I live in my classroom right up over there. <laughs> And um, speaking as a member of the learning community here, um, I just want to say I'm not coming from a political place, but rather from a place of appreciation. I have such a deep appreciation for Stella and what she has brought to our district, and I know she's going to have a bright future wherever she goes, many challenges ahead there, um, but I know that she will be missed here. And um, we you know, hope for the best in the future, um, I'm just, and also Wendy as well, um, I just want you to know that as a teacher and a member of this learning community, I support all my students being, you know, what I work with every day, but I support the entire community. And I feel that what Stella has done with the vision she's brought and what so many others have said today um, has so much meaning and um, there is so much more even coming if it was possible. Um, so I know that she will be so sorely missed. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much from your teachers. <laughs> thank you. And I just wanted, because we won't be addressing action items tonight, I just wanted to offer an and this is not on the agenda. If you want to make sure I just keep that in mind. Still with us when it comes up. Okay. Um, moving on, I am. Um, Kevin, can I? Yes, go back. Sure. I'm so shy. <laughs> uh, I want to give you a little history. In 1965, Gus Heroyan, a teacher here at Parkside, started the outdoor education uh, program. And we had, from 1965, and I'm glad that Superintendent McGee's here, she was very supportive of our program. And in 1968, it was so successful, the county took it over. We've had 500,000 kids go through the program, and it started here in the San Bruno Park School District. Several of us uh, were making the Buckeye Trail and the Conservation Trail, and I always loved it because when my fifth grade would go down, I'd have to tell the kids, when you go to the beach, ask the naturalists, where's the Pycnopodia Gileotoides? And they would look at them and say, you're in Nigel's class, aren't you? <laughs> but um, the program here, if you want to see it after the meeting, uh, the 50th uh, celebration, we had 300 people at Jones Gulch. The superintendent spoke beautifully, and uh, they really honored Gus. Gus lives about 100 yards from the school on Cherry, right here. So I hope his ears are ringing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from the next picture are all the San Bruno teachers that had, and all generations, uh, and including Principal Dunleavy, uh, were there for the celebration. And I'll show you that picture too. Very proud of it.
Our three goals for the district that you've heard and seen very often are about the learning environment, student outcomes, and engagement of families and students. Throughout the year, we go through the same cycle. We're going to be creating a whole new um, LCAP, but in our final year, we are at the stage where we're presenting to the board and then we'll be submitting um, to the county for approval. So I know you guys are aware of our LCAP committee, which meets um, a minimum of four times annually. They are there to provide the consultation. I'm sorry, they are part of the stakeholder input. And if the board, or, I'm sorry, the LCAP advisory is composed of <coughs> teachers, classified staff members. Um, we even had students on the LCAP advisory this last year. And just so that we get all that input to provide to the governing board and their decision to approve updates. Uh, our feedback this year was very rigorous. We collected data through uh, student, family, and staff surveys. We also have this really unique platform called Thought Exchange, which allowed a very thoughtful um, input and more authentic conversations than the surveys could allow for. We received input from our DLAP groups, obviously our SAC LCAP advisory, our curriculum council, and from focus groups that we held at um, schools that didn't have a large percentage of surveys returned. We've had meetings with district staff. All of those were incorporated um, and shared with site principals to guide their development of their school plans. And so I'm going to present to you uh, some of the revised new and improved actions and services for next year's LCAP. You guys saw this at the May 22nd board meeting. This is um, what our funding looks like for next year. I know Wendy's going to give you a more in detailed explanation of budgeting, but just as a snapshot, uh, what I want the community to see is that as we decline in enrollment, uh, our budget is declining. So we're not seeing an increase in funding for next year. So some of the highlights that are in the LCAP. Um, is developing the efficacious instructional leadership teams or the developing the efficacy of our instructional leadership teams. This year we rolled out the effort to develop data teams at each site where teacher leaders participated in analysis of data and, um, and using that data to inform their instruction. Along with that, we utilized district formative assessments to guide the, uh, that data analysis. These will continue um, as priorities in our district. We will continue to fund the Tier 2 community support at Bel Air, along with our um, professional development aligned to the Common Core um, standards and the NGSS. In terms of improved services for conditions of learning, which is our first goal in LCAP. Again, we're going to strengthen the um, ILT network, maintaining increased planning time and collaboration for data analysis. Um, we're moving our PE and music teachers in-house and utilizing and refining our district-wide assessment system. We've had a lot of great feedback from our teachers and administrators regarding the assessments this year, and that's being incorporated into a revised plan we are going to increase the quality and the services for professional development. And um, through the expansion of this last year, we went through a transition from reading counts to accelerated reader, and we realized we need to re-exile and put new points on our books, and so that's a priority for one of the summer projects. In terms of um, pupil outcomes, there's a lot of things that we're maintaining. 
but we're also increasing the opportunities uh, for enrichment, including STEM and music and project-based learning. And uh, this year, as part of our program review for special education, we realized that we needed support to develop and monitor responsive programs for our students with disabilities. And so we were able to fund a program specialist. We will continue to provide targeted reading interventions and increase um, summer opportunities for our students. <laughs> uh, goal three is around family and parent engagement. I can let you know that we um, we are maintaining. Oh, it's just titled wrong. Yeah, it's <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. So we will maintain our parent liaisons in each school site and continue to provide access to students uh, with progress on a, a, a regular basis using some of our twenty first century communication tools. We will continue to provide uh, mental health support and one of the major pushes that we are moving forward is implementing a social emotional learning curriculum. We had um, a school site pilot two different curriculum um, or curricula this last year and we are looking at what well, we just finished discussions about which one they are planning to adopt for next year and we're hoping to share that out district wide so we have strong tier one social emotional learning curriculum. The other goal for, uh, I mean, I don't want to read everything to you guys, but in terms of our parent liaisons, we plan to provide much more professional development around um, attendance and strengthening the resources that they are available, that are available to them uh, for community. So our next steps, well, tonight is our public hearing. On uh, the 26th, we will take board action and then we will submit to the County Office of Education. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. And I'm starting with 
the adopted budget was positive. In fact, it was painted a very rosy picture. The CBO retired and a new one had not been selected, so an outside contractor was brought in to do the close of the books for 2015-16. A new CBO was then hired uh, about a month later and worked with the outside agency when it was discovered 